So here we have it, map number two of this best of nine. $200 on the line, and Frost is going to be the host of this second map. Spawning in the top left-hand position. Representing Neurosoft, we have Wellmoo. And his opponent in the top right. Representing my insanity, it is the Zerg player, Saxry. Do let me know, people who are watching live, whether the sound is a bit more balanced now. Apologies if it was slightly loud in game number one, but it should be all fixed now. I've adjusted it quite steeply, so do just let me know how that's going. Frost being map number two, this is still early days in terms of this best of nine. Losing map one in a, in a best of three is a pretty rough spot. In a best of five, a bit less. Best of seven doesn't really matter. In a best of nine, it's basically a warm-up game. I'm not saying it's not a nice thing to have that game under your belt. But in the grand scheme of things, you've got to win four more if you're going to take this series. And a lot can go wrong or very, very right in those <laughs> in the next four games if you want to try and make it a 5-0. Sactory, opening a little different to last game. Going for that spawning pool first. Clearly being a bit more cautious, having seen the fact that there is a probe, just nestling into his mineral line, trying to just trick those silly drones and their AI away from mining. But this is all still looking to be a fairly normal opening from both of these two. Well, we're going to be going Nexus first. We can see that by the amount of minerals that are still banked up there. And while there is always the option for that forge, don't have to worry too much. Anyway, still waiting to see if anything crazy comes out. I'd say the big thing from game one that was just so insane was probably just how aggressive we saw Saxu. It wasn't a passive play from him in the slightest. Throughout that game, he was the one across the map. He was the one attacking. And while some of that may have been because of the greedy play from Wellman in the Nexus first into the fast third Nexus, but some of it is also Saxi's gameplay. Being that aggressive Zerg player puts a lot of pressure on a Protoss, who quite often Protoss players in PvZ are much more accustomed to being the aggressor themselves. They're used to be moving out across the map on big two base plays, going for a very aggressive style. But roles reversed. Wilmer did a great job of defending against countless bits of pressure. But this game, it could all get flipped on its head. And I'd expect to see quite a different composition from Wilmu. Last game, he was completely reliant on gateway units for the entire game. It was only at the very late, late stages that he went for the Archons added in there too, but no Colossus, no Stargate, nothing other than <laughs> basically Blink Stalkers, Sentries and Zealots. And the reason he was trying to go for that was all through the Forge. That was his kind of fundamental gas investment, was getting those upgrades down. Unfortunately, they were repeatedly blocked. And that's really where Saxory was able to catch back up in those upgrades and eventually take the lead in them taking the one advantage that Wormu actually had and took it for his own. Still keeping an eye on anything crazy coming through from these two. Uh, for the moment there's not too much in terms of insanity on its way but that's nothing to worry about. Very cautious stuff coming through here still. Stargate just now getting started so this is the first bit of tech we're seeing from Wormu so far this series actually with that Stargate but more importantly we are just going to see whether or not Saxory is able to be in the defender's position as opposed to the aggressor we saw in that first map. I'm loving the fact that yet again the overlords are being very active from an early stage. Really this is just Saxory wanting to scout everything but oh he pulls back okay I'm glad he's going back in again didn't see that pylon didn't see the tech will now get the scout and thanks to Stargates, of course, revealing what's being constructed, Saxry will now know that he's going to be up against an Oracle opening. Immediately, Sporecrawler gets started. The Queen's going to go and hug up on it. And therefore, this shouldn't do too much damage. But remember, Oracles, while they're alive, 
can be a big damage dealer late game. And that means that you've got to be quite cautious. More spawns, more spawns are coming down. One at each base. Very standard response. Plus the lair also on its way. By seeing this Stargate, a lot of Zergs will respond with a very fast Hydra Den and going into Ling Hydra. And the reason that is a really good viable option is because if there's a Stargate, there's not going to be High Templar or Colossi for quite a while. It just can't be done. So Ling Hydra without that splash damage can deal a lot. Oracle poking back in will get away and that's the important thing. May have only got two drone kills but it's still alive. That's two plus maybe more. If it had fallen it wouldn't have been worthwhile but still while we were applying some pressure he has forced out those spores. Remember he has somewhat forced Saxi down a specific path in the form of those hydras that are now obviously getting started. But it also means that by forcing Saxory to stay defensive, he's able to secure up this greedy third nexus yet again. And this third nexus is where things are going to be playing through pretty cool. Uh, it has been scouted by the Zerg player, so Saxory knows about this. He's also got 19 lings on the field. 19 Zerglings shouldn't be able to deal with this. There is of course the Photon Cannon. Nicely protected in there. Making a couple of probes though, and by a couple I mean quite a few. Only managing to... Actually didn't pick up a single one there, what? That was crazy, I'm sure I saw one die. Anyway, not too much damage has been done. Still the Lings looking for anywhere they can get some more damage. Because this is quite a big investment in Zerglings. I believe it was 20 initially. Um, let me double check that. Yeah, it would have been 20 odd. And so due to that... That's quite a big lava investment and also a relatively large amount of, of minerals pumped into it. So, we'll see if they can achieve anything. If they catch something like a sentry out position, that'd be fantastic. And it seems precisely what Saxory's going to be gunning for. Meanwhile, Wellmo is adding on more gates. He's got plus two coming down, so this is already different from him. Game number one, he was going for the 1-1. One, one. This game, it's the 2-0. Plus the blink yet again, though. So a similar composition for the mid game from Wellmu, but Saxory really mixing it up. Rather than the Ling Roach composition, it's Ling Hydra. This will deal so, so much better with a kind of Bling Stalker Force or Gateway Heavy composition than Roach Ling will. And that's because the damage output of the Hydralisks, they just deal so much more damage so much quicker. They've got a greater range, so force fields aren't as effective. It's just going to be a lot easier for Saxory to deal a lot of damage here. So, Ling's still poking through, trying to find any damage done. Going to see what these sentries and stalkers are going to be able to do. But this is still normal stuff. Both players just kind of sitting around. Saxory's just gearing up for a massive push. And that is quite evident just from how many units he's pumping out at the moment. But waiting to see if Wellman has any knowledge of this. I don't believe he does at the moment. He knows about the Hydrogen, so probably suspects something coming through and he's about to guarantee his knowledge of it. In comes that Phoenix. Sees all of it. Knows that there's quite a lot of units being produced here. What's Wellman going to do to try and stop this? Well, he already tricked the Pokemon Overcharge. He needs to deal with these Lings, but more importantly, he doesn't want to move his main army out of position. Because if he did, he'd be running into some potential problems of units streaming in from the top towards Snatter and getting caught out of position. So, at the moment, nothing crazy going on. Still waiting, still just checking to see if anything else could be happening, but... With just a plus one missile attack coming through, Saxory doesn't seem to be wanting to move out as of yet. But he's going to have to get defensive because Wellmu, he's prepared for blood. saxory has got a much greater army supply though. About 30 army supply up with a very nice composition to deal with this. Wellmu making a massive wall of force fields. This is literally the great wall of frost in terms of force fields there because Wellmu basically segmented off that entire very wide avenue to attack. Being forced back now though, Saxory got a good concave if he does move in here. It's going to get pretty tense. Well moved, still good with the force fields. 
getting some very cost-effective trades at the moment, and needs to keep that up, because Saxory, his army is great now, but as this game gets later on, it gets less effective. 2-0 compared to 1-0 upgrades, currently in favour of Welmu, who is about to get attacked from the flank. Force fields need to be hitting the money, and they need to be hitting them well. Good work here at the moment. Hydra's at the top, still dishing out quite a bit of damage, plus to the south. This third base is getting ransacked. Just a couple of Hydra's killing so many probes here, and Welmu's own force field is actually preventing him from speedily getting to defend that. A blink forward will provide the safety needed. We'll clean up these hydras, but already 22 workers have been killed. That is a good number of worker kills for this stage of the game. 15 minute mark just hit. Well, me though, he's not in a massively bad economic spot. Sassery is only at 63 drones. And remember, Wellmu had this third up very quickly in this game. He's been playing a greedy style so far this series. And at that stage, the damage probably wasn't enough to do it. The Hydra's though, very high in number now. They've got both their upgrades and the plus one attack. Well, we're going for this fight. The force fields not keeping the sentries safe though. The sentries on the front taking a lot of damage there. Still the Hydra's trying to engage through a massive line of engagements coming through, but well move. he is engaging well. He's still trading slightly more cost effectively than Saxony and is going for the counter attack. More Hydra's on their way through though. And with the plus two missile attack upgrade on its way, the upgrades are about to be matched out between these two. Still keeping a close eye on everything that they do, but no attempt from Saxory to actually up his drone count much. But from Wilma, we've got the Templar Archives. This is a fantastic addition because Ling Hydra, as I mentioned right at the start, actually trades relatively well up against gateway units and blink stalkers. What Ling Hydra fails with miserably is any kind of splash, be that Colossus or Storms. It's a squishy composition, but it can deal a lot of damage. So, got to be keeping a close peek on when the High Templar come out, if it's going to be some Archons, whether it's going to be some Storms. going to be Archons initially. Uh, should be two coming through there. Unfortunately for Wellmu, his fourth base has also been discovered. A cancel, guaranteed, no way he's going to be able to save this, so just quickly cancels it. He's going to lose 100 minerals there, 100 for each of these pylons, which is a bit of a nuisance. But at least it didn't finish. I just game pulled down to that fourth base. The creep spread as well from Sax, alerting him to Wilmu, pushing across towards that watchtower. Wilmu though, he's adding in Storm now. Uh, hasn't actually morphed the Archons yet, instead just keeping these as High Templar, banking up the energy. But Storm, still a fair way off, only about half done for now. Wormu preparing to come in from the north. A handful of things just going to be sneaking through. They're gunning for those High Templar, forcing an Archon walk instantly. High just getting in a very good position to the right, able to pick off a couple of units. Wormu still playing very, very defensive. Meanwhile, Saxory, he's going for the Swarm Hosts, adding in Enduring Locust, adding in the Swarm Hosts. This is going to just slowly siege up this position. And Wormu. While he's done some great job with force fielding off against these Hydras and Lings, picking them apart in bite-sized chunks, wave upon wave of Locusts become a lot more scary. The force field energy, that'll run out pretty quick. The storm energy, that's going to run out pretty quick too. And without Colossus, you can't really deal with a good number of swarm hosts. It just isn't possible to do. So, still keeping an eye on everything that's coming on here. Meanwhile, a couple of stalkers and hydras duking it out down to the south, but with some zealots coming in, they're going to sacrifice themselves to just buffer a bit of damage for the stalkers to dish it through. Upgrades now in Saxory's favour. Currently sitting at 2-1, up against 2-0. Still got to keep an eye on everything, but the locust being revealed, pushing forward. And during locust isn't yet done, that's why they died pretty quick. Spines also moving in here, just adding an extra layer of defense to these swarm hosts. And things are looking pretty tough. Wellmu knows he needs to get some Colossus out. Adding in the robotics facility, making sure that he's got something in order to consistently splash against the waves of locusts. The Hydra's coming in as well, seeing the army a little bit out of position. Wellmu chasing a group of Hydralisks is completely exposing his third nexus here. 
quite concerning. The Spire also coming through from Saxory. This is ready to get out uh, some Corruptors if he needs them up against the Colossus. Still, nice damage. Also coming through. But well moved. While he has managed to fend off the Hydras for now, he's lost 40 probes this game so far. His fourth base really is a lifeline that has to stay alive. It is essential that this stays up because Saxory is already sitting on four bases. He's got a very cost effective army in the form of the swarm hosts. And he's ransacked the third pretty nicely. Can't end out yet. And ooh, a great aspire. Are we actually going to be seeing some broodlords here? That'd be awesome if we did. Hi, just now pushing into the south watchtower, forcing back the stalkers of Wellmu. Meanwhile, the locusts just making progress up towards this fourth base. Going to be trying to whittle down this army, taking them out bit by bit, piece by piece. And remember, every unit that dies to these locusts, every storm that's forced is energy and resources not available should Saxory decide to just move straight in and go for the jugular. Nice little zealot counterattack coming through. There's not much in the way of defense here. And the natural nexus is gonna take a fair bit of a beating. A few locusts should be able to clean this up, but... All the while, the third Nexus is taking a lot of fire. That's a lot of Zealous that Wellmoo's committed up to here. And while he has taken out a Queen in the main and seen the Greater Spire, his third Nexus is going to fall. The Hydralis has just got such a large surface area on him. The Stalkers are in the greatest position in order to engage. They need to try and pick off units as they retreat. Time Warp being used quite nicely there. A couple of Hydras also going to go down, but the Zealots in the main for Wellmoo are still dealing more damage. A couple of roaches popping out now to try and stop this. The Hydra tank getting focused out. Not taking that much damage from only one Zealot. Meanwhile, the Locust making good progress up against this fourth. If the fourth base dies, Wellmu is going to be in very dire spots. Ten Infestors also on their way through. Those Fungal Growths are going to be essential in order to try and lock down the Blink Stalkers to prevent their mobility from being utilized. And that's something that Wellmu has utilized very well throughout this series. Moving in now, more Locusts just starting to chip away, pick away, deal any damage that they can. More Storms being forced just to hold this off because the Colossus count, not high enough in order to deal with this many Swarm Hosts with 16 of them on the field. Fifth base also coming through now for our Zerg. The Spine Cooler and Spore Cooler push edging forward, just slowly leapfrogging their way through. The Locusts Getting a couple more kills to pick off Archon there. And remember, every time you get a nice unit kill with just Locusts, you're trading basically nothing for resources. That is the most effective trade you can ever hope for. Retake of the third, being forced to cancel as these Hydras move in, and Wellmu really on the back foot. He is in the most defensive position possible. Has to just stay up here. And it's quite a hard position for the Locust to break if the Storm is in. Obviously, Colossus keeps shelling through. But the Locusts, as we can see, aren't that easy to kind of stop. They've, it needs quite a few Storms. The Colossus count is slowly climbing. Uh, the sixth one about to pop out into the field now. Upgrades are good for the Colossus as well, with plus three there. So we've got to keep this pretty steady. In come the Locusts. They're getting a nice couple of kills up at this fourth, and unfortunately for Wellmu, he can't move up to deal with it, so he goes straight for the main army. Bungle quotes are hitting the money, preventing the blink forward, keeping these spines poking away at a nice jump. Could have ducked, hit onto one of those Colossus, gets it taken down quick. Still though, the Colossus, they're pushing through, the swarm hosts are starting to die, but another wave of Locust comes on down. The Infestors, pretty much out of energy, but just in the nick of time, in come those Corruptors. They seal the deal. GG from Wilmu and Saxry. It's going to take game number two of this best of three. Best of nine, rather.